I'm Dennis Neal at the Fifth International Vatican Conference, and we're here today with John Crowley. Thanks for being with us. This conference differs from a lot of other narrower medical conferences. How is that important, and how does that help you? Yeah, I think this is a very special one in a number of ways. I think, first of all, taking a very holistic approach to health and to medicine is important broadly in life. It's particularly important for families living with rare diseases. For families like ours, this is a lifelong journey in understanding the relationship of mind, body, soul, spirit helps us remember that this really is a journey through life. Um, so I think that perspective is incredibly important through the conference. And also, too, to understand, you know, again, it's the backdrop of what we do here. And you think about the word Catholic, obviously, with a capital C has the religious implications. And with a small c means universal. In this conference, bringing together different disciplines, different perspectives with a truly global and universal view is going to be incredibly important. It's important to us in the rare and genetic disease field, because in genetic medicine, these diseases know no geographic boundaries, but also the research that we do and the learnings around the world really do need to be shared globally, which also means that when we do develop medicines and treatments or vaccines, whatever it may be, they need to be shared globally. So the importance of global access to cutting edge medicines. And this conference does just such a beautiful job at uniting all those themes. And part of the reason I'm so happy to be a part of it. Your company, Amicus Therapeutics, focuses on rare diseases. What are the three biggest obstacles to making progress on that edge of medicine? I think the first is science itself. You know, we're always trying to unravel the mysteries of human biology, and it turns out that's really, really hard. Um, so making sure that we're promoting cutting edge science um, is the first challenge. And we've made great progress there. I really do believe we are on the cusp of a golden age of medicine in the field of genetic and rare diseases. The second is once we crack the code on biology and discover treatments, therapeutics, medicines, the second challenge is to make sure that we have again global access to ensure that every patient in need living anywhere in the world has access to these medicines. The third challenge is, is time, a sense of urgency. Um, realization that in many of these health challenges, many of the rare diseases, it is a race against the clock, a race against time as much as it is against the mistakes of nature. So science, access, and time are so incredibly important to overcome those challenges. In treating rare diseases, in terms of where we used to be and where we are today, how much progress have we made and how will that compare to the next 10 years? We have made an enormous amount of progress in the last 20 years in the field of genetic medicine from just over 20 years ago when the human genome was decoded. That brought great excitement that we can translate those discoveries into new medicines. It's been quite a journey. In fact, I go back to when our children were diagnosed in 1998 with a rare form of muscular dystrophy known as Pompeii disease. I did all the research I could. I talked to a lot of doctors, one of whom was a researcher in gene therapy. I asked a lot of probably pretty naive questions. One question I asked was, when can this be in children? He said then, a year, maybe two years at the outside. We're now 20 years later, and we are just beginning to treat patients with Pompeii disease with gene therapies. We still have a long way to go to prove that they're safe and effective. Um, but you think about the foundations that have been laid. I'm really excited now about the next decade. I think we'll be able to take all of the learnings, the great science of the last several decades, and finally be able to translate it into medicines, whether they're small molecules, biologics, gene therapies, ultimately gene editing. So I really do believe we are on the cusp of that golden age of medicine that can really transform the entire field of, of rare diseases in genetic medicine and hopefully make many of them um, obsolete, make them footnotes in medical textbooks years to come. That is a great way to end this interview. And thank you very much for being with us today, John. Thank Crowley. you. Pleasure.